Biology classes, you study classification. Phylum class, order, what's the next one? Family, genus, species. The Hebrew word for kind probably equates, in most instances, to what's called the family level of classification. When it comes to dogs, there's only one family of dogs, and they're called dogs. So there's only one kind of dog, and it's called dog. In other words, you'd expect to find uh, dogs reproducing dogs, cats reproducing cats, elephants reproducing elephants. Do you know what the secularists say about domestic dogs, for instance? They say the origin of the domestic dogs from wolves has been established, suggesting a common origin from a single gene pool for all dog populations. Even secularists would say that something like a wolf gave rise eventually to something like that. Poodles. People say, how could that give rise to that? Is that evolution? No, because evolution really should be more of, you know, adding new information. What we see here is an incredible loss of information, actually. Uh, actually, I want you to understand something here. If you're going to believe in evolution, like reptiles evolved into birds, reptiles have the information for scales, but don't have information on how to build a feather, which is a very complex structure. So for evolution, you've got to have matter producing information with all the instructions on how to make a, a feather if a reptile was to evolve into a bird. But it's not just a feather, it's all the other uh, uh, characteristics as well. And so for evolution in the Darwinian sense, you need to see processes where you see new information being added, zillions of bits of new information added. Actually, what we observe is information being lost or rearranged, not information added. And let me help you understand that. We, we'll use dogs. We don't know how many dogs God made originally, but let's say there were two dogs, and they got married and had kids, and they got married and had kids, and they got married and had kids, and eventually we end up with lots of dogs. Okay, you know, in genetics, we have a convention where we label genes with capital letters and small letters, big A, little A, big B, little B. So here's a male and female dog, and imagine something like wolves. And you get one set of genes from the male, one from the female. Here we have two big A's, two big B's, two big C's. And here are some different combinations. Now, as you look at that, I want you to notice something. Because these up here are dogs, th this is gonna be what? A dog. It's gonna look a little different to the parents. You know why? It doesn't have any new information, but you know what it does have? It's got a different combination of information. You see that? It actually has less information than the parents. You know why it's got less information? It no longer has the little A's or the little B's or the little C's. It's actually got less information. This one here, this to me represents something like a poodle. See, if this represents a poodle, when you breed a poodle with a poodle, what are you going to get? A poodle. Pretty sad, but that's it, right? Could you ever start with poodles on their own and breed back to wolves? And the answer is what? No. But theoretically, could you start with wolves and theoretically again get poodles? And the answer would be what? Y yes, exactly. Now, understand the account in the Bible concerning Noah's Ark two of every kind was to go on board Noah's Ark. So if dogs are all one family and there are uh, two dogs on Noah's Ark, then when they came off the Ark, uh, eventually they produce more dogs and you'd end up with a population of dogs, okay? But they're not gonna stay together. What's gonna happen is they're gonna split up and move to different places on the earth. And as they do, because the incredible amount of variability in the genes, eventually you'll end up with distinct groups, even forming different species. And now you're redistributing the information and you're losing information from certain groups. The opposite of evolution. 